I'm never really sure what angle to actually film these at most of the time because it, it's like when you're having a Skype conversation with somebody and you just keep looking at yourself because you just see yourself in the top right window and you just can't help but look at it. I don't know why. I, I hope that's not just a problem with me because that's just it makes it so awkward to film stuff like this where I'm just looking, trying to look directly into the camera lens, but I just keep looking at myself. It's very distracting. Okay, so um, I just thought I'd make a kind of a short unscripted video talking about uh, some of my favorite games that I played from last year um, and maybe some of the stuff that I'm actually anticipating for uh, this year. Um, not really in any particular order, just maybe about uh, five or more games that I played last year that uh, really m made an impression on me. Um, the major first game I played uh, last year that definitely was probably one of my favorites, if not my actual favorite for last year, was Celeste. Um, it, I When you first look at it, it actually doesn't really look like much. It just looks like, oh, it's just like a pixel, pixelated uh, puzzle platformer. But in all actuality, it's actually so much more than that. It's more than just a puzzle platformer. And also, kind of like people that would say that, oh, it's just a puzzle platformer, like trying to diminish how good of a game Celeste is, it's it's kind of insulting because I have not I haven't played a puzzle platformer that's this unique and adds so many gameplay elements since like Braid. Um, every new level just introduces some new mechanic or its own unique mechanic for that level. Um, in the first level, you got those little traffic lights where you step on them and they zoom past, and then you learn the momentum carries you. And then in level two, um, you have the, uh, the little like starlight um, things where you, you zoom through them at high speed. And then it just, it just keeps building on from there. It's just more and more mechanics that really make the game super, super fun to play. And Honestly, like, there's there's not really much else that you can say about Celeste. I mean, it's it's actually kind of insane that uh, during the Game Awards, it was actually nominated for Game of the Year. Um, uh, amidst, like, games like Monster Hunter World and, and Red Dead Redemption 2, which we'll talk about later, um, it was amazing to see a game that was developed by such a small team um, represented uh, in, in quite a few categories. And that really shows you, like, how impactful this game was. Kind of impressive, honestly. Um, but yeah, if you... If you really like beautiful sprite work, um, incredibly responsive controls, uh, a, pr a fairly good narrative, and an absolutely killer soundtrack, um, I would definitely suggest... Um, I would definitely suggest Celeste. It's it's up there. It's and it was crazy that the year started out like that with like Monster Hunter World and then that game. What was crazy is I'm a pretty big Monster Hunter fan and I bought Monster Hunter World and I was loving it and then Celeste came out and I just it, I completely forgot Monster Hunter even existed <laughs> because I was so engrossed in this, this small little adventure that a, a small team of people created. So yeah, definitely check out Celeste. Um, the next game I think that I could talk about, at least for a little bit, was the Shadow of the Colossus um, HD remake, essentially. Uh, Blue Point Games has done pretty fantastic work, honestly, with a lot of their their remasters. They did the the Metal Gear Solid HD collection uh, for PS3 and Vita, and it was, oh, it was incredible. There's not really much else you can say about the PS4 remake, because that is essentially all it is, is just Shadow of the Colossus, but Super Pretty Graphics Edition. It's basically the same controls, it's the, it's the same setup. Most of the content in the game is pretty much the exact same as it was. I think maybe there's a couple things here and there, but by and large, it's it's still the same game. Which, honestly, in my opinion, I don't think you really need to change much from 
the original Shadow of the Colossus other other than the graphics. That's pretty much the only thing that you really need to change, because the game is really, really solid, honestly. But, uh, yeah, if you have a PS4, I would definitely recommend uh, getting Shadow of the Colossus. I think it's like 40 bucks, 30, 40 bucks. It's really not that bad of a deal, and if you've never played Shadow of the Colossus before, it, like, it's definitely, this is, in my opinion, the way to play it. The biggest game of the year, what actually just one game of the year, that I could talk about for a while was God of War for PS4. Um, I think some people have been calling it God of War 4. I mean, technically, I guess it's God of War 5. If you count, if you count Ascension as one of the main games, I don't think a whole lot of people do, though. Um, I guess just for convenience sake, I'll just call it God of War 4. Um, but, wow. Um, the the crazy thing with me is I've I've never played any of the God of War games. I've had a, a passive interest in them, but I've never actually tried to play them. Um, mostly because I never owned a PlayStation 2, and every time that I try to emulate a PlayStation 2 game on my computer, it craps out. So not really much point to it but I, I saw the reviews for it I had seen the previous showings like uh, the videos from like e3 and a couple different things and it looked interesting it looked interesting and what I wasn't expecting was it probably like the most solid one of the most solid AAA experiences that I've had in a really really long time came from this game there's, I don't even know where to start with this game because it's honestly incredible. Uh, Christopher Judge's Kratos does an incredible job. His voice is like you're being cascaded in, in like chocolate and velvet at the same time. Th that man has an amazing voice is what I'm trying to say. Um, uh, the kid who plays Atreus, I can't remember his name right now, uh, but he does a great job too. All the voice acting is actually really solid. The story is pretty, it's straightforward, it's easy to follow, and there's a lot of stuff that, after watching some God of War lore videos, oh, like, there's quite a lot of references beyond um, some of the more obvious ones that come later in the story that talk about Kratos' past, and um, I'm really excited to see where they take the story with the sequel, because it was monumentally successful. Um, absolutely incredible game. I really, really hope that they can maintain that level for the next game. Even if it takes another, like, four years or five years or whatever to make it, I am beyond excited for, um, where Cory Barlock takes this story and just kind of expands on it more. If you want a game that has incredibly layered combat, a great story that's like not too heady, like everybody can enjoy it, it's very, very basic, it talks on that level to the human emotion, um, and an incredible score by Bear McCreary, um, who some people might actually know by being the composer for Battlestar Galactica. Um, that score is, is unreal. My absolute favorite moment in the score um, is, uh, spoilers for the end of God of War 4, if you haven't played it yet, go play it right now if you have a PS4. If you don't have a PS4, what are you doing with your life? Go and buy one so you can experience these incredible first party exclusives and Bloodborne and all these other games. Why are you not, why are you don't, why don't you own a PlayStation 4? Near the end, Baldur is choking his mother Freya, and Kratos pulls him aside, and Baldur's like, oh, you could have just walked away. And Kratos is like, the cycle is here, we must be better than this. And then his body falls down onto the snow, and just this incredible orchestral swell comes up, and it's un- 
real how incredible that moment is, not just because of the performance, but also because of the music. Bear McCreary is a god! Uh, but yeah, uh, definitely check out God of War for uh, it's uh, it's incredible. If 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 nothing convinced you to buy a PlayStation Four yet, you have to play God of War Four. You have to. It's probably the best game of last year, besides, in my personal favorite, Celeste. <laughs> This year was not particularly great for Nintendo, other other than Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, which is an amazing game. Smash, in my opinion, is always, always super fun to play. Um, Smash 4 was a little lacking in single-player stuff, but it was by far, like, one of the most fun, fun ones to play. Um, the mechanical changes they made in Ultimate are fantastic. Uh, the roster's insane. It's, like, 74 playable characters. Uh, there's over 100 stages to play on. There's over 800 music tracks to listen to. Um, the story mode is... It's, like, mixed with event mode. World of Light is pretty cool. There's a lot of, like, cool theming and, like, they use the existing roster to create unique battles based on certain spirits that aren't playable characters. It's actually pretty cool. There's actually this one spirit battle, which is with uh, the spirit that you're fighting to get is Gino from Super Mario RPG. And you have to fight... Um, <laughs> it's actually really interesting how they do it. Uh, the way they do it is they make you fight the whole party, like the full party of characters that are playable in Super Mario RPG. You fight Bowser, you fight Mario, uh, you fight Mallow, who is represented by a gray Kirby. <laughs> Um, and then I think they uh, have Sheik uh, representing Gino. It's it's pretty neat. the The whole uh, world of light is is pretty solid, and it's actually uh, kind of impressive. Uh, like just the the usage of the existing roster and, and items and stages. It's actually pretty cool. You you can't knock you can't knock World of Light for like anything other than they tried they really tried and they made it like absolutely wonderful to play through but yeah super smash brothers ultimate is it's a great game i think that if you have a switch you probably should be playing it because it's only going to get better from here they're adding uh, joker from persona 5 probably like one of my favorite games of 2017 and also ever uh, he's a character that's being added as dlc um, I can't wait to see what his attacks are gonna be like. Um, it's just Smash. Smash is Smash. I don't need. To, I don't need to sell you on Smash. Smash is Smash. That's all you need to know. So go play it. <laughs> That's all you need. Other than that, Nintendo didn't honestly have a super great year with their uh, first-party games that came out. So this is my Switch here. I'm gonna go through the different games. Um, that are in my library that I purchased for my Switch um, in 2018. Smash Brothers Ultimate, which, yeah. Uh, Celeste, which I definitely didn't regret. Um, but at the same time, it wasn't, you know, that's not an, a Nintendo game. Um, Hollow Knight was ported to the Switch, which I was really excited about. Hollow Knight is one of the best games that I've ever played in my life. One of the best games of 2017. 2017 was really good for video games and video game soundtracks. If you haven't played Hollow Knight, go play go play Hollow Knight right now. Turn off this video and go play Hollow Knight right now. It's so good. You won't regret it. Um, I played... Oh, they... I Well... See, this is the thing with being a Switch owner is like, I'm not even really complaining about it, but it's just like, I'll look at the games that I've bought and I'll, I'll see it and I'll think, oh, wait a second, that's that's not even like a Switch exclusive, that's just a port. Like, Okami HD came out and I love Okami. I absolutely love Okami. It's one of my favorite games of all time. But that's, that you know, it's a game that came out over 12 years ago, so it's like nobody really cares, do they? 
Um, oh, I guess I, I could talk about Octopath Traveler. Um, Octopath, I never, I never actually finished Octopath Traveler. I got uh, about halfway through each of the characters' story arcs. I enjoyed it. I really did. And uh, honestly, I think the music in that game is amazing. The music in Octopath Traveler, I think, is honestly the selling point for that game. If you if you want to do anything with Octopath Traveler, just buy the soundtrack. This soundtrack is so good. Okay, just I'm just gonna play you a segment of battle music from the game, and you just make up your mind. How are you not going to play a game after you hear something like that? Honestly, that's kind of ridiculous. The Messenger, which I think was a game by Devolver Digital. I think Devolver Digital published it. I can't remember who developed it. Um, it's basically, the game is really interesting because it starts off as essentially like a Ninja Gaiden type game. It's very similar to Ninja Gaiden. But after you go through basically what you think is the main story, then you get transported like 400 years into the future. The graphics change from 8-bit to 16-bit. Um, and you have to basically do the whole game differently. All the levels are the same, but now it's turned into a Metroid, uh, Metroidvania or Metroid-style exploration game which really flips the game on its head. And I think for some people, that they that they might see that and go, wait, what? It's like, I thought that was the whole game. It's like, I don't really want to play this anymore. Um, but in, in my opinion, I think the game was... Uh, that, that's just when the game gets started, essentially. And it's, uh, it, it's a great game. If you haven't played The Messenger, play it. it. That's a game that also has a super, super solid soundtrack there's uh, honestly if you if you want to play like something that's similar to ninja gaiden um definitely definitely give the messenger a try it's you won't be disappointed back to certain triple a games uh sony had a great year this year, uh, tons of Spider-Man related stuff, and one of those was Spider-Man for PS4, which is incredible, and it was super fun. The thing with Spider-Man PS4 is it's incredibly fun. The uh, combat is basically like an evolution of the Arkham series, but you almost feel like you have more options for dispatching people. It's actually, like, kind of incredible the amount of just fluidity that the combat has. Just going from one guy to the next, using webs in certain ways, using using the gadgets in certain ways, using the suit abilities in certain ways. It's, it's all really solid. The traversal is amazing. Honestly, I think that the selling point of Spider-Man PS4 is the web swinging and the traversal. Because it's so fun! It's so fun! You could literally spend, like, half an hour or more just doing nothing but web-swinging around the city. It's super fun! It's so fun to do that. And Insomniac nailed it. They absolutely nailed Spider-Man's movement. They made him feel super, super fun to play as. It's so, so, so much fun. And, um... Yeah, that's all you can really say about it. One of the bigger games that closed the year out in October of, of all months was Red Dead Redemption 2. Now, the thing with Red Dead Redemption 2 that I think a lot of more and more people are starting to kind of realize, especially with uh, videos like Nakey Jakey's coming out, which is, if you haven't watched that video, go watch that video. 
it's incredible. It's so good. And it won't even make you hate the game. But the thing with Red Dead Redemption 2 is it has an incredible narrative. Arthur Morgan is the best Rockstar character that's ever been written. I honestly, like, cried near the end of the game because of, like, how impactful that character was. Um, in, like, in the context of the game's story. But in all, in all actuality, Red Dead Redemption 2 is... It's a, it's a very simple game, and Rockstar makes very simple games. Um, at least in terms of gameplay. Because basically what you do in Rockstar games is... You shoot people. And you talk to people. And that's, that's basically every Rockstar game ever made. Now that's not necessarily knocking it. Because Red Dead Redemption 2 is still amazing. It's an incredible experience. I, if you own a PS4 or an Xbox One, definitely play Red Dead Redemption 2. Because the story in it will keep you going. It will keep you invested. The world that it takes place in, the characters, and like, that's not even knocking the shooting necessarily, because the shooting is super solid, and the Deadeye system is really robust this time around. And like, there's certain points during the story where the Deadeye will uh, will kick in automatically and you'll unlock like a new Deadeye ability like instead of tagging people you can just fire at will like and and remain in slow motion there's a lot of really incredible moments if if you want if you want a prime example of why you should play Red Dead Redemption 2 um, it one of the reasons I would say is the soundtrack the I think in the Game Awards, Red Dead Redemption 2 actually won Best Soundtrack. And, you know, when you listen to other games that were nominated like uh, Octopath and um, God of War and uh, Celeste, these, these incredible composers that made super memorable tracks. I honestly, as a musician, Red Dead Redemption 2 is fully deserving of winning that, that award. Because the way that Red Dead Redemption 2 uses music to exemplify moments of gameplay and make them super heightened and make you incredibly invested in the action you're doing, it's, it's, it's unlike most other games I've played. And Woody Jackson just, he killed it. He killed it with this soundtrack. If you want, if you want to listen to some amazing battle music. If you want to listen to just incredible music in general that just completely captures that time period of the late 1800s into the early 1900s, this kind of cowboy, Wild West is ending sort of sound, it's amazing. Look up the tracks, Fleeting Joy and Jim Milton Rides Again. You will not be disappointed with how those tracks make you feel. It's incredible. There's not really much else you can say about Red Dead Redemption 2 that most everybody else hasn't said by now. Basically the, the bullet points <laughs> that I'll give are the bullet points I'll give for Red Dead Redemption 2 are great graphics. The game looks incredible. The story is really solid. The characters are all incredibly fleshed out and you are invested in them. Arthur Morgan is the best protagonist that Rockstar's ever made. End of discussion. I don't know what else you can say about it. Um, if, you have, if you have the system to play it on, go play it. You won't be disappointed. Other than some of the later missions tend to get a little repetitive with like kind of turning into like a shooting gallery but by and large really solid game really solid game and the soundtrack is great there's not really much else you could say uh this video is starting to get a little long so i think i'm basically just gonna end it with last year was pretty 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 good for video games i don't think it was as good as 2017 in my personal opinion just because 2017 we got persona 5 and breath of the wild and mario odyssey and hollow knight and all these other 
incredible games with amazing soundtracks and Horizon Zero Dawn and all these great games. Um, but despite that, 2018 was actually still pretty great for video games. And I actually can't wait for the newer games that are coming out this year. I actually just can't wait to see what the companies have up their sleeves. I'm interested to see if the PlayStation 5 might be launched this year. Um, I'm hoping maybe we can get some information on when Death Stranding's coming out and The Last of Us Part 2 and games like that. I don't know. But, uh, but yeah, that's basically all I gotta say. I forgot to talk about Deltarune. Okay, so my mic, I might go on for just a little bit here, but oh my god. Deltarune probably is one of the best games of 2018, and it's only the first chapter of a possible game that Toby Fox is making. If you don't know who Toby Fox is, he's the guy that created Undertale, which, you know, it was just it was just this little small game in 2015. You probably, you know, probably probably haven't heard of it. I don't know if I don't know if you have. But Undertale, incredible game, made by one guy. This is also made by one guy with help from a couple other people. If I can gush about Deltarune for just a few minutes, I need to get it out of my system. Deltarune has a banging soundtrack. It's incredible how Toby Fox creates a game and then he creates the own music for it. And it's unreal how good it is. It's amazing. When I heard that Deltarune was a game that was announced, like, and it came out the same day, I was like, the first thing that came into my mind was, there's gonna be some bangers in this soundtrack. I can already tell. The gameplay is a natural evolution of what Undertale's bullet hell type, um, man, I made the mic peak right there. The gameplay is a natural evolution of the bullet hell type gameplay that Undertale really, really made special. And the characters, Ah! The characters are so charming, and they're so well-written. Susie is great. Ralsi is perfect. He's perfection. Look at this boy. Look at this beautiful little goat boy. How could you not love this? Everything about Deltarune is... Okay, I'm not even going to talk about it, honestly, all that much. I think Deltarune is just something that everybody has to experience. It's free! You don't even have to pay anything for it. Just go play Deltarune. It's so good. You won't regret it. It's like three or four hours long. What are you doing on a, on a day off? What are you doing? Go play Deltarune. Okay. Um, with that, there's not really much else I can say. Uh, last year was great, and I'm really looking forward to seeing more and more stuff coming out later this year. So that's it. Uh, if you guys want to see me do more videos like this, where I kind of just talk off the cuff about video games, um, just comment down below and just let me know. But that's all I got for you guys. Peace.